Before we get rolling, just have to pop this slide on here just to, uh, this is our disclaimer, just to make sure that you know that Trade Ideas is not an investment advisory company. We do not tell you when to buy stocks. We don't tell you when to sell the stock. So this is just the, uh, you know, a normal disclaimer that we have to put out there before any, any one of these webinars. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is, now this is kind of geared a little bit to, uh, you know, the newer user, uh, but I do think there will be enough in here for even those, those who have had the program for, for a little bit of time, um, especially with this volume percent filter and the way I use it in the pre-market. But I'm going to go over the, uh, the relative volume filter the vol uh, versus the volume percent filter. Which one should you use and when should you use it? I'm also going to go over my a pre-market uh, actives window. I'm going to go into this in a fair amount of depth and that'll be a bit later in the, during the presentation. And I know a lot of you who know me from the, uh, from the trading room, um, you know, they may, they might all, you might always, excuse me, you might have this uh, particular window already. But if you don't, uh, certainly uh, I'll be happy to share it with you. All you're going to have to do later on is to uh, type in uh, or send an email to info at trade-ideas.com and I'll be glad to send you this particular uh, window. Now what I want to do is just get this screen up so that, uh, there we go. Okay, so again, a lot of you who... Uh, follow me in, in the room. You know I do a daily uh, market video, uh, basically uh, recounting some of the trades I took in the market, uh, and I do that every single day. Now, here's a bit of a scoop. Some of you already know uh, this is the address to get into our room right now, uh, logging in with your Facebook or your Twitter account. However, the big news is that we will be switching to a, a brand new trading room. Uh, I would say more than likely that will start next Monday. We may launch it a little bit earlier. But it's going to be based on the Abnovia platform, and that is uh, has many more bells and whistles than the uh, current uh, trading room has. Uh, you know, I'll be able to share my screen with you when I see fit. Uh, I can even get on the mic and yak at you for for, for a bit. Uh, so I'm very excited about that because it'll allow us allow me to more interact with uh, all you uh, guys out there. So, um, so let me uh, start talking about the relative volume filter and the volume percent filter. Now again, if you're new, if you're new to trade ideas or you've had it for a while, um, I mean this might be a little bit rudimentary, but you know, bear with me for, for a bit because, uh, and in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tease you guys just a little bit because I want to bring up a chart before we get into this. And this is a chart of a stock that we traded in the room today. Let me get on a, a five minute uh, or a 15 minute chart. And if you're in the room today, you know that we traded Aerie. And, whoops, <laughs> just one second. Get the chart up again. Okay, so you know that we traded Aerie. And the reason I even knew about Aerie is because of the pre-market uh, work that I had done last week. And I'm going to go over that in, in obviously more detail. But this was a great trade for a lot of us in the room today. And, you know, I, I actually took the trade right here. This was a short, uh, a short trade. Took the trade at about 24.73. Uh, the reason I took this trade is because this is a biotech and the uh, the uh, Biotech index, which is IBB, let me just bring out that chart. IBB, this is the biotech index, and let's take a look on a 15 minute chart for it. You can see that it was just, it had a horrendous day, it was dragging down virtually every single bio out there. And so I, I had seen this from, well, sorry, this is, uh, I had this on the uh, symbol link, so let me just get it back again. So I had seen this, this is a biotech, I had seen this last week, and I, I'm going to show you a, bit, a little bit later on the daily chart why I really got into this, but, you know, because the biotech industry or the biotechs were really sinking, let me get rid of the uh, symbol linking here, so because this was really sinking, I wanted to get into this one in the worst way, and it took a bit of time because it kind of uh, stagnated for a while before it really fell, and uh, but took the trade as I say a short 2473, got out some at uh, 2396, some more at 2330, 
and some more right, right around here at 23.68. So it turned out to be a great trade. I actually only traded uh, two stocks today, this one and another one which was basically flat. But I just wanted to tease you guys a little bit to show you how I even found this stock based on my uh, pre-market working uh, or action. So let me just back this out. And now we'll get to the sort of the crux of what I want to talk about today. And again, if you don't know, if you're new to trade ideas, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to just create a, a very basic alert window. And I'm going to start from scratch. So that's basically what uh, I'm just going to have basically create a, a blank slate for it. And as I said in the uh, the handout, it, I want to take a look at the relative volume filter. And so if I do a search, I'm just going to do a search here, sorry, on the filters. And I'm going to do a search on volume. And I'm going to get relative volume. I'm going to add these filters. Because these are the ones I really want to discuss today, okay? Because I think that a lot of people don't use the relative volume fil filter necessarily correctly, and, and I almost guarantee maybe you don't use this one correctly. And this is my opinion, of course, but I'll, I'll certainly show you how I use this one, especially in the pre-market. It's a wonderful filter to use in the pre-market. But let me, uh, let's just start to build a very, very basic uh, alert window. And I'm gonna say minimum price has to be $20. The maximum is going to be $80. I'm going to put a volume of 50,000 shares, and that's very light, but you know, for the purposes of this webinar, I just want to uh, you know, it, it probably illustrate it a little bit better. Also, I want to make sure the stocks are up 3% or down 3% from yesterday's close. And a very quick way to see what you've done is just by clicking on the summary. And so these are the filters that are in place in this alert window. And again, if you don't know what an alert window is, what, what, what this is going to do is uh, basically, I will set a trigger so that as long as the stock is between 20 and 80, the volume is at least 50,000 shares and the stock is up or down at least 3%, I want to get alerted when something happens. And that's something ha that something that I want to happen is when the stock either makes a new high or a new low for the day. So there you have it. So right now, this is, this is a very basic, basic alert window. And what would happen if the market were live, you would see stocks that would be streaming by all day long as long as these filter conditions are met. When a new high or a new low happened, then, then uh, you would see the stock in the alert window. However, you know, most of us, certainly in the trading room, and I know I am certainly a day trader, and so you, know, you really have to add a volume filter um, if you want to effectively get rid of a lot of the uh, stocks that you really don't want to see. And so this is one of the volume filters. So if I put 200 in here, uh, this is on a percentage basis. So basically this is going to find me stocks uh, that where the filter is saying that the stock has to trade at least 200% of normal. Let me just put, uh, click on the summary and you can see the stock has to trade at least 200% of normal. Now, what is normal? Well, for this purpose of this definition, the uh, traded is looks at the last 10 days of trading, and whatever the average was over the last 10 days of trading, that is what they consider normal. So let's just say a stock normally trades 500,000, has normally traded 500,000 shares a day over the last 10 days. So that means with this filter in place, the stock is going to have to trade a million shares before you're going to see it, assuming, of course, these other filters have been met and the stock either hits a new high or a new low. And I think that this filter probably is what I would call the standard filter that most trading platforms use. Um, you know, if you go to most trading platforms, you can find stocks, uh, you say, well, show me stocks that are trading twice as much as normal. And so this is what would be used. However, I think that we have a much better filter to use during normal trading hours, and this is the relative volume filter. I'm just going to put two in there, uh, delete this, and now this is a ratio, so 200, uh, 200 here is the same as two there. This is a ratio and this is as a percent. But what is the relative volume filter? What is it doing exactly? Well, let's take our example of the stock that normally trades 500,000 shares for the day. What if that stock traded 400,000 shares in the first five minutes? 
wouldn't you want to see that stock almost immediately? That is trading, you know, relative to how it normally uh, uh, trades probably, that is really trading uh, an astronomical number. If you only had this filter in place at 200, that stock would have to trade at least a million shares before it would get triggered, assuming all the other filters were met, of course, and, and it hit a new high or new low. So I think the, 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 the answer is obvious. Of course I would much rather see if uh, that stock when it has traded 400,000 shares earlier than having to wait for it to trade a million shares. So what the relative volume filter does, and it's, it's, I believe it is a proprietary filter to uh, trade ideas, it, it looks at the time, basically the time of day. So it knows that if that, tr if that stock normally trades half a million shares a day, by in the first five minutes, uh, the, the statistics are, 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 are stored in the, in the uh, trade ideas uh, uh, database that it knows that say that stock normally only trades say 35,000 shares in the first five minutes and or in the first 10 minutes. It doesn't really matter the time frame. I mean, I'm just using five or 10 as an example. But that stock, if it trades 400,000 shares, I want to know about it. So by putting two here, and let's just use as an example, let's just say that this stock is traded, normally trades 35,000 in the first five minutes. If that stock trades 75,000 in the first five minutes, I'm going to know about it. And again, in, in my example, that stock is trading 75,000. It could be trading 400,000 in the first five minutes. But I'm going to know about it almost immediately because uh, you know, I'm not having to wait for it to, uh, to, uh, to trade a million shares. So that's why I think that the relative volume filter is the one to use uh, and the one I only use, to be honest with you. I rarely use this one during regular market hours, normal market hours. I only, I only use this one because you know, it's telling me right now at this time of day what is, what is normal uh, for it and then if it's abnormal, I'm going to know about it almost, I'm going to know about it immediately. So this is, again, I ho hopefully that, that's a good explanation about why I, I use this, uh, this one. Now, let me just back this out. I want to close this down. And I, now I do want to bring in my pre-market list. And this is what I use. This is the, this is the uh, a top list. This is, uh, if you don't know what a top list is, basically it, uh, you know, I think most people are, are, are used to being able to go to websites that say, okay, here are the stocks that are most up for the day. I use this in the pre-market. These are the stocks that are most up for the day right now in terms of percentage or in terms of absolute dollars. And I've just chosen these are the columns that I am interested in. And don't worry, I'm going to go over about all, how I've color-coded all these things and why I've colored color-coded than the way I have. But before I do that, I do want to just uh, say uh, or, or point out one thing, and that's about the relative volume filter. Because this is a question that I get a lot. They say, you know, Barry, I, I've created a top list window, and I'm using it in the pre-market. And, you know, all, I, I just want to see stocks that are up or down 3%, and with, say, a minimum volume of 5,000 shares, and I'm getting nothing in this window. And yet, when the market opens at 9:30, all of a sudden, I'm getting lots of. Uh, I'm, I'm getting it's it's full. And there, are, the the reason this is happening is one of two reasons. Almost 99.99 percent of the time, this is what's happened. If I right click on the window and go to configure, you're going to notice there's something called sort. And this is this is the what what is called the uh, trade idea server sort. And you can see I have the server sort on volume today shares. That's the total number of shares, all right? And there are different filters that I could pick. But basically, what this is doing is, assuming the other uh, filters are met, and let me just quickly show you what they are. Uh, stocks up and down, up or down 3%, at least a dollar. And, and just as a bit of an aside, you might say, well, why haven't I put in a minimum volume? You know, I used to put in a minimum volume of 20,000 shares. But what I, was found, what I was finding is that, you know, there could be a stock that was up 20% and only 500 shares, and I, I would be missing that one. And, you know, at the, when the market opened, it could all of a sudden explode. And so I have taken out the minimum volume right now, and so I can see those stocks that maybe, even though they're, you know, trading hardly anything, but they could be up or down a lot. And I just want to have a quick glance at them to see, you know, why might that be happening? So that's why I, I don't have the, uh, the, the minimum volume in here. But anyway, 
So imagine, so here is the server sort as, as it's called. So what this is going to do, assuming that the other filters are met, up and down 3%, uh, at least a dollar, it's going to deliver to me at the top 100 uh, stocks in terms of the amount of shares that have traded. If I clicked on this one, it would, it would show me the top 100 in terms of the change from the close, all right? And again, as long as the other filters are met. However, watch what happens if, you, if it's on the relative volume uh, filter. I'm going to click OK, OK, and boom, look what happens. Nothing. That, why that happens is that the relative volume filter only looks at the volume in, in the, normal, in the, uh, the uh, normal trading day. In other words, from 9.30 to 4 o'clock uh, Eastern time. It, because what it's seeing, it's seeing zero. It's seeing stocks that have zero volume, so it can't deliver you anything. All right? So that's, that's why, and I get that question all the time. And it's through absolutely, probably no fault of their own that this has happened because, to be honest, a lot of people don't even know that this, this sort exists, okay? And in a, a while ago, if you clicked it on, I have to back this out, I'm just close this down. If you clicked on new and, and created a new top list window, what would happen is that unfortunately in the past, and I think I asked them to change this, uh, it would default to the relative volume ratio. So every time you, you created a, 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 a new top list, it would default to this. This is absolutely perfect to use during market hours, but if you were trying to create a, a window to use in the pre-market, it just wouldn't work. And it was frustrating, I know, for people to... In a, I bet you there are a lot of people out there that don't, didn't even know that and didn't ask the question. They just gave up. But those who asked me the question, you know, at least I was able to tell them, well, this is the reason why this is happening. So uh, just, just to know that if you, know, if you want to now... Uh, if you have an existing top list window and you click on the sort and it's on relative volume, now you know to take it off there and put it onto something else. So let me just take it off and put it on the volume today. And again, it's back and now we're populated again with, uh, with stocks. Now, here's, excuse me, here's the other reason why it could happen. Now, this is probably more obvious to you now that I've told you that the relative volume filter doesn't work in the pre-market. Because now you've, you've tried to create a, uh, a top list window to be used in the pre-market. You didn't realize that the uh, relative volume could, couldn't be used here. You know, so you stick one in here thinking, great, you know, this is what I want. Uh, you know, I hear this is a wonderful filter to use. So and you go, OK. And again, same thing happens. You get, no, you get nothing. So let me just bring this back and make sure I take the um, filter out so now we have some shares or some stocks to take a look at. Now, what I've done, this is, this is my, this is my pre-market actives window that I use every single day. This is the one that really identifies to me the stocks that potentially could be the really active uh, 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 stocks to trade during the, during the day. Now, it's possible none of them will, will be that active after once the market uh, opens. It's not likely, but it's possible, and, but that's okay. Because, you know, look, I think everybody should have some kind of a trading plan before, they, uh, before the market opens. So uh, this is a great way just to, you know, find maybe three or four or five stocks to kind of concentrate on, especially when the, market, when the market opens. Now, this one happens to be from last Thursday, okay? Uh, I decided to freeze it and, uh, because you can see it's on the September 17th. It's on last Thursday. I did that because it has some very really spectacular ones to take a look at. And, you know, I sort of dumped a little bit over the volume today percentage filter uh, and said, you know, I don't use it during regular market hours. But boy, do I ever use it uh, in the pre-market because this one does work in the pre-market. Uh, when, when, when the market closes and you see that a stock has traded, say, a million shares, that could be comprised of uh, 90, 900,000 during the mar regular market hours and 100,000 during the pre-market. So this filter absolutely works during regular market hours. So what I, when I see something like this, and this is telling me uh, that this stock has already traded. This is Airy. Now, this was on Thursday, okay? And now maybe you're cluing in why I traded it today because I had been alerted to it last week and so this was something that I absolutely wanted to keep watching for a while. 
But when I saw this, I thought, wow, this is traded already 221% in the pre-market of what it normally trades for the entire day. I have this column right here. This is telling me that on the average for the last 10 days, it traded 756,000 shares a day. 1.6 million was in the pre-market. So, you know, you math majors out there, you just divide 1.6 million by this, you get 2.21, and we've multiplied for this filter by 100 to get uh, put it in a percentage basis. So this is why my eye is immediately drawn to this. This one, now again, if you're in the room or you just traded on your own, you probably saw CANF. I mean, this stock went from about a dollar to eight dollars in uh, two trading days. Look at the volume percent. I mean, your eye is just immediately drawn to it, 2,000 percent. Now, admittedly, it only usually traded 7,000 shares or 17,000 shares a day, so 388,000 shares was uh, a tremendous increase. But nonetheless, th this, if you play poker at all, these to me were tremendous tells that these stocks were going to be in play and absolutely had to be watched. Now, this might look like a, a bit of a piker. Well, actually, this one was good too, 317%. Uh, I believe this one was a buyout or a potential buyout. To, this was Cablevision. Uh, so again, 317% of what it normally trades all day was traded in the pre-market. But even this one is good. You know, Lake, which I think is, uh, you know, I think Lake got up to $16 today. There's a bit of a, a, a tell over three days. You know, this 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 started to get really active. It traded. 34% uh, of what normally trades in the pre-market, what it trades for the entire day. These are very, very telling statistics. And this, so if you see a, a solid blue bar across here, that means it has to be at least 100%. And then, you know, here is the actual figure right here. But again, you know, if uh, this little triangle here, if it were, I mean, it, it's at 34%. This is just a nice graphic. If we're at 30, if we're at 50%, the triangle would be about right there. So this is this is one that I look at almost right after. You know, this is how I sort it. I want to see the the ones that are up the most for the day uh, first, and then I immediately go to this one to see. Well, you know what is is it really trading abnormally? I know it's trading abnormal volume. How abnormal is it? And this would tell me it's extremely abnormal. So. This is just, a, again, this is how I use the volume today percent filter then. And uh, so now let me bring back Ari and just show you, come on, get up here. Let me show you on a daily chart why, let me just bring this over here. Just a second here, let me get this over here. It's not, uh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Ari, about uh, let's see, when is this? This is I think August, April the twenty twenty fourth. So this was April twenty third. So here you are as a as an Ari shareholder. You know, yeah, it had a bit of a dip here, but it's had a nice little trend up here, a little bit of consolidation. You're not too concerned about what might happen with this stock, and then all of a sudden they come up with uh, the FDA. Uh, they have a, an announcement that uh, you know, and it did whatever. Whatever this is a biotech, and I think they have some kind of a glaucoma drug. It didn't pass whatever um, uh, minimum it had to for FDA approval. Not approval because I mean this is probably still a phase one. I don't. It's, I don't think it's a phase three. But at any rate, had bad news. I mean that's the bottom line. Had bad news. So imagine here you are a shareholder, and it immediately you know you wake up and here it is at fifteen dollars. And then even over the next few days, it drops down. I think it down. This is about down to eight dollars. Had a bit of a pop up. And then, you know, I think, you know, the shorts probably were, were, were cringing right now, and then it popped up, then it started to drift down again, and then all of a sudden we had this news. And so, you know, the news was, it looked like it was refuting that this, this data. I, I looked at the news, and it basically, the data that came out looked like it was pretty positive. So all of a sudden, you know, everybody's piling into this stock, and it almost got back up to its, uh, to, to its original. But look at this, it started to sell off. And it, it, it could not hold its gains. This is Thursday. This is Friday. So I, this is why, for me, I had, to, I had to watch this stock today. Why? Because look at the gap here. I mean, you know, I'm not saying, so when I, when I was watching this stock and I'm watching the IBB tanking and I'm seeing this starting to drift down also, I'm thinking, wow, this, this, this is one that could, really has potential. There's nothing on the chart 
that can really, from a technical point of view, I mean, if you want to use this, fine, but, you know, you could use this as a technical, uh, perhaps, support area, or even down here. Lots of what we call, it's big void, or a you know, black sky below. So that's why I had a lot of patience on this stock, even though, you know, it, it sort of popped around this area. It, it was a bit of a struggle. I almost got out of it because I was watching other stocks. Uh, and, you know, they were drifting a lot more severely down than, than this one was. But, 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 you know, had I not seen this on Thursday, you know, there's no, you know, I probably wouldn't have really zero or zero it in on this one today just to uh, as something to follow. So hopefully that makes sense to you, that why you would use the volume today percent filter as, uh, as a great tell. Now, the other, reason, the other thing that uh, I love is the short flow percentage. And basically, if you, you know, that what this is telling me, and this is why this, this was, uh, you know, super attractive on that day, even though it didn't, it didn't continue up. But, you know, here is the float for, for, the, for the stock, about 20 million shares. And so the short float, that 28% of, of the float was short. It means, you know, there's 5.6 million, 5.7 million shares were short. So all of a sudden, you know, fantastic news. Let me bring back again the daily on this. Fantastic news happens. So you're sitting there as a short and boom, you know, it just pops up. Well, I mean, this is exactly what you want to, you want to see. You want to see a stock popping up 90%. I mean, that's, uh, you know, incredible with a high short position. And, and you know, and then the volume today. So, you know, the, again, this is what I'm looking for in the pre-market. I'm looking for stocks that have a high short percentage that are moving higher. I mean, uh, this is like almost like the perfect storm that, that is happening. Again, it didn't really work because, you know, as I say, you know, well, I would have loved to have seen this just continue up, but it just didn't happen. But you don't know that, and, and, you know, until the market opens and you start watching. But, you know, that's why this is, uh, you know, a, a really nice filter also to have. This is a really interesting filter, the stock twits relative activity. If you don't know what stock twits is, it's, it's basically a, a big stock message board and it tracks the number of times that a stock is mentioned all day long. And, you know, on this particular one, this, this, uh, this stock up to this point was only mentioned on average about seven times a day. And uh, trade ideas, uh, we can actually uh, go, we, we have access to their database, and so all of a sudden this stock, of course, because of all the activity, was up 11,000% in terms of activity. I mean, this one was up 32,000% in terms of activity. And so not only does Trade Ideas, uh, you know, track the, the technical uh, data, but it also tracks the social media data. And so this is another great tell. So, you know, if, if I look at a stock and I see blue, 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 and, you know, why is it blue? Because these are, I have color coded it this way. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you here how I've color coded this. And, you know, Jamie last Monday went into a, I think his webinar was a lot about color coding. But, so I'm not going to get, uh, you know, too involved with it, but just to show you what I do, because, you know, I, I like to see what I call dots on the screen that immediately draw my eyes to things as opposed to color gradients. And that's just my, my personal pre preference. So what I do is, you know, to, in, in order to start one of these, you just click on the, um, on the header and you right click on it. You go to custom colors for short float. And I'm going to delete this. I'm going to first, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to delete it and just take a, and I'm going to say, okay, Watch what's going to happen. These should hopefully, you know, these are all disappear. So you see how this this these disappeared. Uh, this is not uh, this is not blue anymore. So in order for me to have done that in the first place, I would right click, go to the short float again, and again, you know, here are gradients that you can use, but. You know, personally, I just like to see the, the, the dots, as I call them, and they just, immediately I can draw my eyes to this, and I, I just happen to like them all being in blue, generally. So, for me to start this, I click on the center one, and I click on white, say OK, and then I'm going to put 20 here. And that's my personal preference. You know, you can obviously change that to anything you like. Click on the greater than. Select a color, which is the blue, say OK, add it, and now once I say OK, 
once they say, okay, these all change back to uh, the way I like to see. I mean, look at this one, 64% uh, of the, uh, it, this, this is 64% uh, short float. I mean, that's, that's incredible. So, you know, this is probably in, in order, I like to look at this, and I've color coded this one. I know I said I like everything in blue. You know, anything over 10% is going to be in this color. Um, all this green just means that the stocks are uh, above, at least 3% above the close, and these ones are at least 3% below the close. Now, I should have said something about the top list, uh, just, just quickly. Again, if you're new to what a top list does, you notice here that this is at three, because for my top list, again, my sum, if I click on the summary, stocks have to be up at least 3% or down 3%, all right? So, this snock, st snock, this stock has just snuck in here at 3%. What a top list does is it updates every 30 seconds. So in the next 30 seconds, if this stock had been only up 2.9%, it would have dropped off this list, okay? And some other stock, you know, that was sitting, lurking at 2.92% may, may have popped up and it would make it, would, uh, make it to this list. So that's what it's, a top list does. And I have sorted it on this uh, change uh, from the close, but I could sort it on any one of these columns. And all I have to do is, is click on the column, and now it's sorted on, this is the absolute dollars it's up for the close. I mean, look at this, $16 up on a $34 stock. I mean, you've got to be paying attention to that one. Um, and, you know, I could, I could, short, I could uh, do it, well, I would do it the other way. This is the short float. So these are the ones that are, you know, have a very, very short float, uh, very short float, very uh, low float. Now, why would you want a stock with a low float? Let, let, let me get back to this one again. One of the reasons why CANF, again, if you look at the, at the float, now, I have color-coded this for uh, stocks that are less than 10 million shares in the float. That's just my personal preference. But, you know, this one is almost there. This stock, when, let me just bring CANF up here, show you what happened in case you weren't aware of it. So here's where it closed on Wednesday. This is the Thursday action, and this is the Friday action. I mean, look at this. It got all the way up to almost $8 on, on, on Wednesday. It was $1.76. Now, it is, it, uh, you know, if I look at it, to, well, here it is to, uh, today on Monday, and it is starting to, uh, you know, to give it all back. But th the thing about the, sh the float so if you have a stock that has it is a very sorry right here a very uh, low float, and I don't even know what the news was, but it's trading of normal volume. People want the stock, and there's there's not a lot of shares to go around. That's what makes a stock just take off like this. When there's not a, a lot of shares to go around, it just absolutely will take off. Uh, now it took a while. I remember, uh, you know, during the day it kind of uh, right here it kind of hung around there. But then, you know, by the end of the day it was up here, and then the post market it just it, it just flew up. But again, a tell. Look at the look at the the size of the float. And you know, if it if it is like this, um, a short like a like a small short uh, or a small float. Uh, and and the stock is up a lot, and it's uh, you know it and it it's uh, it's trading a huge volume percent in the pre-market. These are the stocks that you really have to pay attention to. Now here's another one that I, I like to look at, and uh, this is the consecutive days uh, filter. What this one does now, it doesn't have really good examples, uh, 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 you know, from Thursday. But you know, I also look at this one, and what this is telling me is I have it sorted or I have it uh, filtered on stocks that are up at uh, greater than two days up in a row or two days down in a row. It has to be greater than that. Why this is interesting is, you know, if I take a look at this one. See this one down here? This is at the bottom of the list. So this was a stock that was, you know, lost 16%. Uh, it was down $4 in, in actual dollars. It had been up four days in a row. So here's a stock, you know, that's going up, 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 and then all of a sudden it, it has a disastrous uh, day. This could be the beginning of a downtrend. I actually don't even know what happened uh, to this one. I wasn't really, but, you know, we can take a look. Oops. We can take a look to see what happened on this one, and so this is this is the third. So you can see here's a stock that was up four days in a row, and then all of a sudden it just collapsed. And you know here it is on Friday, and it kept going down. So here was the sign that this stock was probably maybe maybe going to give up all its gains and continue in a bit of a downtrend. Now today it has bounced back, and I'm telling you that you know I'm going to probably put an alert on this stock right here. 
it, because if it clears above the, the high of uh, Thursday, it might start to regain its uh, momentum. So, you know, that's something that, uh, well, this is, you know, for another webinar, but the things that I look for uh, for my what I call my best ten uh, stocks. This is this is some of the things that I look for to to uh, to watch stocks for the next day to see if there's any potential if there might be a potential trade there. But what would have you know? But I also see stocks though that, for instance, this could have been down five days in a row. All right, and then all of a sudden it's popped up. So again, here's a stock maybe that's down and now it's popping up. Maybe this is a trend reversal right now also. So. Uh, this is just for me. This is the, my, my 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 religion is to you know watch this in the pre market, get get some idea about what the top stocks are. I try to get about four or five of them. I you know I, I talk about them in the room, of course, and other people. You know this is not a, a list that is just mine. Uh, I have shared this with uh, with uh, virtually everybody in the room that they asked me for it, and I certainly will share it with you. So that is really the end of my. Um, uh, I guess the plan part of the webinar, and I guess I could turn it over to uh, Scott and, and ask if there are any questions, and maybe he wants to, uh, maybe I, I should be putting up the uh, page in which uh, we can get some of the specials that uh, Scott talked about, and hopefully I can find that page. I think if I... Um, I think it's slide four right there on the presentation. Um, okay, let me just... Yeah, those of you that are in the presentation should be able to look at the... Here we go handouts panel on your GoToWebinar interface and uh, download a PDF. It has a couple of pages, including this one, uh, which basically just has a way to say thank you for those of you who are currently subscribers but that don't have the odds maker. You can get a discount on the odds maker, 25% off. Uh, you can use that code, the same one, to get 25% off your first year or 50% off your first month if you're not currently a subscriber. We also have a link there to the 1088 package. Now the 1088 package includes the full year of trade ideas, the lifetime odds maker license, and the custom optimized strategy. Um, go ahead and look for that handout, and uh, we'll go ahead and circle back to this after Barry has answered some questions. I'm going to be helping out with that too. Just uh, type your questions into the questions panel, and I'm going to look back here a little ways. So um, looking back into the questions, Barry, we got one on from Brian. How do you get the graphical indicator on volume to today percent? Um, his won't let him click on it. Uh, he may have an older version of trade ideas because this is the standard now. If you uh, the, the minute you you know you there's this is what you're going to see. Uh, I, and again, I don't know what version he might have, but if you if you download the latest version, you certainly see this. And I as I understand it, uh, there is a there's a later. I don't have this. This one doesn't actually have the latest version. Uh, there was another beta that was released today to the uh, general public, and I think that this has even been improved on. But if you had the, one of the last few versions, this is. Yeah, this is the, how it is displayed. I think the last public beta there is 4.0.9. You're probably on uh, actually, 0.15 uh, or 0.14 or something. Yeah, I think actually in the in the trading room today, I believe I may be wrong, uh, but I believe that uh, somebody posted uh, the 0.15. Uh, but I may be wrong, but even if it isn't, if it's the 0.09 version, you will see this. You should see this anyway. And this to me is is uh, I mean this is the default, and you know to me it it. it it's the way it should have been, uh, because now you can see exactly the percentage. Plus, plus your eye is drawn to the fact that it's, uh, you know, it, this cell is completely uh, filled in. Uh, you know, maybe I didn't explain this well enough, but if you know, if this had just gone up to 100%, then this cell would have been would have been filled in uh, with, with the blue. Uh, but you know, the fact that it's only a 34%, that's why it's it's uh, it's only 34% filled in the cell. But but you have the percentage right here at all times now. Now we have a question from someone that wanted to know how the count alert works. Which alerts does um, it account? All types of alerts. I, I believe that's uh, you know the count. Uh, I think it's a column actually. Is what he's thinking. Yeah, and it's in it, it's, and uh, in the alerts count window. Alert. Yeah. Yeah, it's in, in the it's in an alerts window, and basically, I mean, for instance, if if you uh, if you were looking at uh, wanting to see stocks hitting a new high or a new low, uh, you could you could set the count, for instance, at uh, say a minimum of five or six, and so until a stock hit uh, the, the sixth time, it hit a new high, 
then then you know as a filter you wouldn't see it until then if you just have it as a column you know you can put these uh, you can just have it as a column and it will just keep a running total so as a, you know for instance if if a stock hit a new high 20 times it would start it, you you would see that as the count the next time it hit a new high the count would change to 21 so that is basically what the count filter will do. You can use it on certain alerts, but you know, I, I if if I use it at all, it's usually on the new high or the new low. Just, just to, uh, and that really can zero in. I mean, if a stock has made a new high like 50 times, <laughs> you know something is really extraordinary happening. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the other, you know, there's a question about the uh, the, um, you know, the AI channel that's coming out. Uh, is that going to do a lot of the work that you were showing today, or you know, because there's times like this when the, the guy that posted this says he feels lazy, um, or is this uh, entirely different than what the AI channel is going to? This is this is entirely different. I mean, th this is your pre-market work. You know, I mean, look, if you don't want if you want to get up at 9:30 and and uh, and turn on trade ideas, uh, you know, that's fine. I mean. I, there are a lot of alerts and filters that I use, of course, all day long. It's not, it's not just this one. The AI channel, excuse me, when, once it gets uh, launched, that will really, that will have optimized strategies in it that uh, are optimized on a daily basis that you can, if that's all you want to do, as long as you have the odds maker, you, you will have to have the uh, subscription to the odds maker in order to access that, that channel. But if that's all you want to do, that's fine. And the AI channel will probably be comprised of uh, certainly there'll be some swing trades um, right now I think it's it's starting to lean towards uh, short trades but there should be some long trades in there intraday trading and some swing trades and when you get an alert I mean listen I, I think that even if you get an alert and maybe this is, is, is you know comes from experience if you get an alert in even in the AI channel yes it's been optimized uh, so that you know, hopefully, you know the odds are in your favor. I would still always click on the uh, on the alert, check to see the daily chart, the uh, the weekly chart, even the intraday chart, just to make sure there's no uh, support or resistance nearby, depending on what direction the the uh, the alert is telling you to go. Uh, but you know, it, they should be well optimized, and they'll be optimized on a daily basis. So I'm really excited about seeing seeing seeing, uh, seeing how it's going to all turn out. You know, and that definitely is the lazy man's place to, to trade. You know, it's the let the computer do all the work for you. So I may be just old school. I have to have some stocks that I want to uh, I want to be following, and this is for me the best way to do it is is using this window in the pre market. Thank you. Uh, so a question from Susan. Um, she says, uh, so do beginners use the channel bar to begin with, and then build to what you're tracking or teaching? Uh, um, as a way of like uh, indicating to start with something simple and then build the foundation around it, I guess. Yeah, I mean the, the let me okay, I got to be able to find this now. Um, the, yeah, the, I mean the Trade Ideas channel bar actually has a pre-market. Uh, it's it's perhaps not quite as involved in this as, as this, uh, but the but the uh, channel bar. I just have to find my where where is it hiding? Just one second. This is a problem sometimes when you do these. Uh... Okay. Oops. Hmm. Can you guys still see the screen? Yeah, we can still see your screen there. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have something open that is not allowing me. So you have to trust me on this. Um, I have something open that is not allowing me to click on the channel bar. Let me just see if I can quickly find it. And get rid of it. Hmm. Unfortunately, I don't know where it is. Okay, but at any rate, uh, yes. What I would say is that the TI channel bar, there is a pre-market uh, channel there, and you can uh, certainly use it. Oh, I see what's happened. Okay, okay. Let me just close down a couple of things here. Now I might be able to. No. I know what's happened. I've, I've loaded a layout and I've exceeded the number of uh, charts that are, that are available. So um, I'm sorry about that. But at any rate, <laughs> you see what's happened? Okay. But get out of here. Okay. I know. Thank you for telling me. Okay. But again, if you can, uh, so, oh, maybe I'll close it down. So here on the new channel bar, and I run the risk of really screwing this up, but 
again, if you click on pre-market, you're going to get the stocks that are gapping up, gapping down, and are, and are interesting. This, yes, I would say is a little more advanced, uh, but there's no reason why you can't, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's that advanced. I mean, all I've done is add some columns that I really, really uh, think uh, uh, should be followed in the pre-market, but yes, absolutely. Just uh, click on the pre-market and you can see instantly what's, what the interesting stocks are. Yeah, and then Carl's asking if you're not using your ProGap or Top List anymore. So he says, Am uh, I not using my ProGap? He, he well, seems to remember you used to use an average 300K daily volume filter on that one. Um, okay, if you're talking about during market hours, uh, yeah, I mean, I have, I have some, well, I'm using, some, I'm using a Turbo Breaks Up, I'm using a Turbo Breaks Down, I'm using, um, you know, many, well, this one I'm also using, which are, I don't even know what I've got in here as the, um, let's see the summary, so 600,000 shares as an example, okay, so I can certainly send you guys this one, I think I've shared this one in the room also, but uh, um, but certainly in the pre-market though, I'm not, I'm not uh, looking at 300,000 shares, I'm just looking at, uh, you know, a minimum number of shares, not even a minimum, I just, and that's why I was saying, you know, this stock in theory could have been up nine, not, not likely, but up ninety percent and only five hundred shares. I would have wanted to see it and then make my determination whether I want to follow it or not. Cool. Um, could you just review doing the colors one more time? That's no, uh, sure. Some people find that a little confusing. Uh, okay. I think Mike would appreciate. Well, it. All right. So here, so you can click on any window, okay? And I'll, again, I'll use this particular window as my example. So you can, you just basically right-click on the column header. So that's all I've done. I've right-clicked on the column header, and this is what pops up. It says custom colors for short float, and that's because I've, you know, I've clicked on obviously the, the short float column. So I just click on that, and this is what's going to pop pop up. And it's telling me to wait for a while. Okay, let me try again. I don't know why it's, uh, it's just taking some time now. <laughs> hmm. Again, you know, doing the live webinar. Um, I don't know why it's doing this. I don't know why it's uh, telling me to wait. Uh, it can't be just because it's that particular window. Let me just. Uh, but I'll, let me just click on another one. Hmm. Well, guys, I don't know why it's telling me to wait because this just should have uh, popped up. Um, hmm. Okay, next question. <laughs> I can't because I can't. You know what? What would have popped up is then I would have been able to just show you. Uh, you know how to change, how to do it. It's very simple, but uh, unfortunately, it is just not wanting to. Um, it's just not wanting to go along with what I want to do right now. Can can you give a little illustration of how to use the optimization tools and the odds maker? Those the tabs. Uh, you probably don't have to show an optimized strategy, but if you run a strategy and then show where those features are located in there. Okay, so. and hopefully not the same thing is not going to happen. So in any alert window, you just right click and then you can run the odds maker, and this is this is basically uh, something that will pop up. Uh, I'm not going to run it. I mean, I could try to run it. I have no idea. I mean, this is not an optimized uh, strategy at all. This is my little floaters on the move. It's not an optimized strategy. This is something that I like to watch. But in essence, that that's all you're doing. Uh, and the odds maker. I mean, you can uh, indicate when you want to start trade, when you want to end trades, how long you want to hold them, you know, minutes after entry. If you want to swing them. You know, you would use this. You could, uh, you know, swing them for several days if that's what you want to do. Uh, you can put a stop loss in, uh, whatever you want to put in. You just click on that, a dollar fifty cents. You know, if you're looking for a two to one, uh, then you might put a dollar as the gain, uh, fifty cents as it, if it moves against you. You know, there's all sorts of uh, variables that you can, of course, use with the odds maker. I'm afraid to go simulate buy because this really does take some computing power, and I'm sure I'm just going to get hung up, unfortunately. But um, but that's that's in essence how the odds maker works, and it um, you know back tests for uh, sixty up to sixty three days, which is a, basically three months worth of data. Is there is it possible to freeze the time span on charts? In other words, if we're looking at a history on a strategy, when we click on another stock from that history, 
Will it bring us back to current day and time? Uh, meaning today, instead of locking in the date and time frame we were just looking at for the previous stock? Um, in terms of, boy, can I bring up a chart? You can't freeze the chart so much. You can freeze this. I, I, is that the question? Uh, is it freezing the, the top list? Because in essence, uh, you know, that, that's in essence what I have done. Um, or, you know, what you can do with the top list is you can just go to the, um, uh, back to the time, well, let me create a, I'm going to uh, take a look at another top list. And, you know, here's my spider top list. And I could freeze it at any any time during the day. I could freeze it right here. I could have frozen it at 925. Uh, I mean, this is not a great example because this is just the spider top list. But you can freeze any any top list. As far as a chart goes, no. You can't, uh, as far as I know anyway, unless this is an added uh, function uh, to the charts, you cannot, you cannot freeze the chart. Um, but what you what what the charts are able to do now is to uh, let me just make sure I can find, I'll find a chart. You can you see what's happened here in this particular chart. So I've marked it up here. This will remain until you get rid of these lines. So you know, next week if I want to bring back Aerie, I will still see these lines until I get rid of these lines. Uh, you can still see them. So. Uh, I know it's not freezing the chart, but at least you can still see your markup if that if that's what you're looking for. Great. Let's see if there's any other. If anyone else has any other questions, go ahead and type those in now. Uh, on the stocks that uh, gap up and trading with unusual volume, is there a way to see the news, like news on why it gapped up? I don't believe so, Omar. We don't link directly to. No, I mean we don't have we don't specifically have a news filter. However, I mean you know this might be the de facto news filter because you know I don't have to see the news. I don't actually have to see the news to know that something incredible is happening. But I know what you're saying. I mean, uh, you know the, the news was that there you know an FDA uh, uh, announcement and uh, the news was good, uh, but we don't have the actual news. But you know to be honest with you. I don't actually look at the news that often. I don't really want to be uh, emotionally attached to the news. I don't want to see that the news is, is looks so great that the stock can't possibly uh, go down. You know, it's this is just going to continue. Um, you know, so but when I look at this, this is sort of my my news reader. This tells me that because everybody else is 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 looking at this. Everybody else is looking at this volume, and so it's obviously news related. But no, the specific news, no, we don't have a filter like that. Hey Samuel, I don't think uh, 4.0.2 is the newest version of Lightspeed. Try downloading it from our Lightspeed page or from the Lightspeed site. I think you'll find it's at least 0.9. Uh, it might actually be 0 0.12 or 0 0.13. But thanks everyone for attending. Uh, Barry, if you can put it on uh, back on that slide that shows uh, slide four that has the uh, product code for uh, for savings. Um, so. Everyone that attended has this as a handout in uh, in their GoTo webinar panel. So please uh, download that if you can take advantage of any of these offers. This is these are great prices for you to take advantage of. Um, uh, and one more question from Bill: If we're planning on adding more than ten charts at a time, I'm not really sure, Bill. Uh, ten seems to be adequate. Uh, it's something we'll we'll uh, continue to monitor. Um, but you know, if those of you that have seen the full values of trade value of trade ideas, go sign up for that 1088 package and uh, shoot us a note if you're already a subscriber, so we can fix your account billing. That's uh, go to. Can, can, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Scott. I just would like to say one thing after you're done. I'm pretty much done. Go ahead. Okay. All right. One uh, one thing about the charts. Let me just. Uh, you know, I have. Um, I've used many charting packages. Uh, I've had, you know, I don't I've, look. They're all great. Uh, you know, eSignal, Trade Station, uh, TC2000. Um, for right now, and this is these are these charts are in what I call the rudimentary stage, the beginning stage. But for clarity purposes, I haven't seen anything that 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 meets this. And uh, you know, 
things will be added. We'll, I know we're going to be adding uh, SMAs. I think we're going to be adding Bollinger Bands. Uh, I think we're going to be adding VWAP and all that. Now, notice, I mean, if you saw a chart, I used to have TC2000. If you saw my TC2000 chart, this is all I have on it. I only have candles and the volume. Uh, I have nothing else. Maybe on a daily chart, I'll stick the 200-day moving average. But I, I personally like a really clean chart. And what this does for me is that these, this just sort of, jumps out at me. I mean, th th this pattern just jumps out at me when, I, when I'm looking at this. And, you know, I'm looking at hundreds, almost maybe a thousand charts a day. My eyes get tired. And I need something that's very clean, crisp, and concise. And, uh, you know, for me, the Trade Ideas charts, this is a fantastic start to them. And, um, you know, there's, <laughs> there, there, there's my recommendation that if you haven't tried the charts or you're thinking, ah, you know, I, I need something with a whole bunch of other indicators, you know, give this a whirl and we will be adding some indicators. I'm not saying there's going to be a thousand of them, but I think we're going to add enough indicators that this, these, this is going to be just a great, great charting package. That's it. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, any questions at all, just email info at tradeideas.com. You know, go ahead and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're uh, Trade Ideas Pro on Facebook, Trade Ideas One, and Trade Ideas on Twitter. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, Barry. Okay. Thank you very much.